Uh, but so much going on, so much happening. Now, I haven't pre-scripted this with Dr. Pachenik. I don't know his view on this. He wanted to talk about uh, the situation with Libya, the situation in Syria. I want to get his take on what is WikiLeaks doing, not releasing the data now. Have they made a deal? StevePachenik.com has a lot of articles breaking down what's happening in Aleppo and more. But he's also an expert on what happened uh, in Haiti with the Clintons and what in the world's going on. Uh, audio reveals that John Kerry told Syrians behind closed doors. It's pretty amazing. So there's a lot going on to cover on the waterfront. I wanted to get Dr. Pachenik on about something he talked about about five, six years ago about de-evolution from federal and global control, saying the EU will collapse, uh, the federal government will become a joke, the South and the Midwest and Texas and other places, everybody's going to flee from the socialism, from the collectivism. There's going to be a new boom in these areas, but we're going to have to get involved and locally involved and stop following these illegal orders. And I didn't roll my eyes. I mean, I knew that was coming, but we've seen Catalonia. We've seen the Brexit. He was absolutely on target. And a lot of folks uh, were really excited about that. But I don't know. So we'll get into some of that today. But am I wrong, Dr. Steve Pachenik, um, former head of psychological warfare of the State Department, you name it, Am I wrong in saying if Trump goes into Haiti right behind the hurricane, it'll be a huge bully pulpit to expose what I think is probably the number one issue. They're swindling uh, through the Clinton Foundation of the Haitians and others. Now, you and I have not talked about this, so I want your audience to understand we didn't discuss it beforehand. Not only are you not wrong, but a month ago I wrote a blog saying that Hillary, Bill Clinton, as indicted by their daughter, Chelsea, were directly responsible not only for billions of dollars going into the Clinton Foundation, but it also includes the United Nations peacekeepers. She indicted her own family and the United Nations for the death of 10,000 innocent Haitian people. Now, the reason I know Haiti and I grew up with Haitians is because I speak Creole and I grew up in the south of France and in Miami. So the Haitians were my people. I grew up with them at school. I grew up with them in Cuba and elsewhere. So I know and I speak Creole. More importantly, I think your audience should understand Haiti was developed by a physician, Dr. Duvalier. He was sent there on behalf of the Rockefeller Foundation in the 20s and 30s to uh, eliminate smallpox. And he did in the book Aerosmith by Sinclair Lewis, the fiction book. He's talking about Dr. Duvalier. From that point on, Dr. Duvalier became the leader of Haiti and did some good things, but was very strong and created a unit called the Tonto Maut. And the Haitians know that I know who Dr. Duvalier is. Now, ironically, you and I did not talk about this, Petit Doc, or Little Doc, his son, was, I was involved in extricating him from Haiti into France, the Côte d'Azur, because he stole $500 million. In that tradition of Aristides, Doc Duvalier, Le Petit Doc, we have the Clintons, who not only stole billions of dollars, but they were directly implicated with the Secretary General of the United Nations, listen to what I'm saying, by everyone involved, including including Chelsea's notes about what happened in Haiti as directly responsible for the death of 10,000 Haitian men, women, and children because of the E. coli sepsis that they created defecating in the water. So there is criminal charges involved. In and that, that was the UN, so the I forgot. I, I, General of the United Nations. So I forgot. Start back over. You're right. It's not just stealing uh, almost $2 billion. No. It's not the billions it's that death. they stole. It was the incompetency that occurred and the specific malfeasant behavior that even Chelsea wrote about in the notes that were released uh, about the United Nations and their incompetency that was sent in along with the people who belonged to the Clinton Foundation where they had no idea of what they were doing. They were specifically negligent. Not only were they robbers, but they were murderers. And no one has brought that to the forefront. So I wrote about it a month ago. No one said a word. You and I have not talked. But there is there are ten thousand Haitians who have been who are dead 
Not question about it. There is no if, and, and buts about the fact that the Clintons, the United Nations Secretary General Moon, are directly responsible for the death of 10,000 Haitians. And the reason for that is they brought in Nepalese soldiers who had no idea of what they were doing. The Clintons had no idea. Blink, Bill Clinton, as usual, is completely incompetent, as was Hillary, and they had all kinds of cross purpose activities going on, but it was negligence. It's like malpractice in medicine. It's malpractice in politics. And this is what Trump should bring up through General Flynn, he himself. Now, should he go to Haiti? I would appreciate it as a fellow Haitian or someone who grew up with the Haitians that he would show support. But it's enough to explain tonight, including Michael Pence, who I have a great admiration for, to articulate the amount of discontent, malfeasance, corruption, and negligence, malpractice, that the Clintons have imposed and created, not only in Haiti, but all over the world. But Haiti is a good example. Now, for the Haitians to come up and protest. That's very brave of them. But I also explain to the audience the Haitians are very tough people. When I say tough, I don't just mean they're nasty. They can be very tough. And when they accuse somebody of malfeasance, that's not something that comes off the top of their head. That's not a, just a, a, a gesture of anger. The Haitians have absorbed a lot of humiliations, a lot of hurt on behalf of America and the French in particular. But specifically, when it came to the death of their children, men and women, the Haitians correctly stated that Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, jealousy who even indicted her own family in the notes, and Moon, Big Moon, the Secretary General of the U.N., and the people in the U.N. were directly responsible for the death of 10,000 innocent men and women. It was not covered by the media. As usual, you had to bring it out. And as usual, you and I did not discuss this beforehand. You had no idea what my ideas were concerning Haiti. But it turned out I was involved with Haiti. I know you've been involved in basically everything. So, Dr. Steve Pachinik, I mean, I think Trump really should get there and get there immediately. And, and, and the, I mean, the leaders of Haiti, many of them are, are ready to be with him. He's in already they've already asked him to come because they know that he's been exposing Hillary and the foundation. This is a godsend. This is a terrible thing happening to Haiti. But but it's a godsend if Trump takes advantage of this. A, do you agree with that? B, how would you do it? Well, what I agree with, I know the Haitians, and they're very effective in America in terms of organizing for political action. They are very smart. They're highly tutored in both the French and the English cultures. They know exactly what they're doing. They're highly entrepreneurial. These are not people who are asking for help or donations. So if Trump were to go down there and make a presence and state that he would help the Haitians, that would solidify his base. Uh, the issue of the storm, you know, we're just waiting for it. But there are much bigger storms than the, the physical storm. The storm that you pr presented in terms of Hillary being sick again is so important. I can't emphasize that enough to the audience and to the Democrats and to the Americans. We cannot have an, a highly physically, mentally compromised presidential candidate. It's just not possible. We are at a point in the history of America that if that continues, we will have all our allies abandon us, as the Philippines are doing, the Russians who have been helping us have been doing, and we have no position to give our military and our intelligence a direct strategy and tactic. Well, that was my next question, uh, moving off of Haiti. Uh, obviously, the Russians have now done a 40-person nuclear war drill. They've suspended weapons grade. Uh, uranium uh, decommissioning and transfers, and they're saying you were aiding al-Qaeda, you were aiding al-Nazra. We had a deal, as you know, the Pentagon working with them behind the scenes to actually take out the bad guys. They're finally mopping them up, and then magically we have bombings uh, of uh, Syrian government forces every time they're about to win. The Russians say, we're not going to back out on our deal. If you kick al-Nazra out, we, you know, Assad's going to go. We, I mean, and I think the Russians will keep their promise. So what has changed? Because the Russians are really going into a very belligerent uh, stance now, saying they've been double-crossed. Well, 
Let me put it this way. When our own Secretary of State, the incompetent, incredibly incompetent John Kerry, who I remember going into the Vietnam War, I was in the Nixon administration, brought his own camera crew, can talk badly and allow that the, his own speech to come back to the president of the United States, undermine the president, no matter what you might think of him, undermine our military to say our military should have been there. He should be dismissed summarily. Well, it shows the whole double dealing nastiness of these globalists. They're not Americans. They're globalists using the U.S. for their own profits and control. That's why no one has respect for us. They don't understand that they're not good leaders. They're so delusional. It, it just has the smell of, of, of failure about them. Well, John Kerry was an incompetent. He was picked because he is incompetent. That is the most important lesson we have to learn in terms of all the people that we have right now. It's the same reason Biden is a senator. It's the same reason Kerry is a senator. It's the same reason Hillary was a senator. She did nothing. And Trump was bringing up the point, but he has to specifically... Uh, mentioned that she came in promising a quarter of a million jobs in New York State, and instead there was a decrease of 20% of the jobs that were already there. Trump has to now go into numbers and explain why it is the Clinton Foundation is so corrupt and how it is that the Clinton uh, household is a trust fund so they don't have to pay taxes and how many billions of dollars went into the Clinton Foundation. Oh, I know. Bitching about Trump avoiding taxes with the very same loopholes they use, but they don't build anything. Well, but the key here is that, in my opinion, I think Trump's people correctly leaked it out. What it allows Trump to do now and his people is to explain that this is a legitimate way of approaching business when you do, in fact, have real estate. And many of us in, in, our, in this war have little amounts of real estate, and we do what we can to pay as little tax as possible. But then he has to turn around and show how much corruption – and the nonprofit organization of the Clinton Foundation exists, and more importantly, they've never been audited. Think of this. They've never been audited. And so Trump has to demand an auditing of the Clinton Foundation, and she has to demand it before any election occurs, because once they're audited, you will find transgressions of the law of the IRS. Oh, they admit money laundering. Their their their, their foundations. Well, I mean, you'll see the connection to Haiti. You'll see the connection to the Russians. You'll see the connections to the Saudis. You'll see the connections to every country that Bill Clinton, that incompetent uh, Lothario. I mean, he's a pathetic man. I've met him. He's what do you pathetic. make of the image? Of, I don't know if you saw this of them in Tel Aviv, and he won't get on the plane for twenty minutes. And finally, Obama's rolling up his sleeves, saying, get up here, Bill, 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 to have another president talking to him like a dog. And then Clinton's body language is he's out of his mind. Clinton looks like a zombie when he's in public. What is going on there? Well, Bill Clinton was never a very effective president, contrary to what the liberals want to talk about. He's had a besmirched career. He's totally ineffectual. He's an addict. His mother was not a nurse. His whole history is contrived. Again, he came out of the Sam Walton School of Intelligence. I mean, Sam Walton was the head of incarceration for the Italians and the Germans in the United States. So the intelligence community, particularly on the civilian side, Catholics in Action, CIA, sponsored him. And this is what I'm trying to stop through you people, through, um, uh, through Alex Jones and all. It's the CIA's in intervention into our politics. Not only is it Bill Clinton, it's Bush Jr., another moron. Then we have Obama, who's had no experience whatsoever, had no strategy, and no accomplishments. Now we have Trump whose right-hand man is not a CIA operative, but a military intelligence operative. And what you see playing out here is what I've been saying for years. No, it's the total war between what's left of the Army, the oldest U.S. institution, older than the Declaration of Independence, uh, and this foreign takeover. Correct. And the CIA and their civilian counterparts. It's not an accident that Obama allowed John Brennan to have to eliminate human, which they did very poorly, human intelligence. Because that ends up blinding the country to the takeover. It's clearly, this was all meant to take the country down. Well, what I'm saying is, in my, in my novel, and I don't often talk about maximum no, ability, no, do it. it's, it's very accurate to say, look, 
if a president overreaches his or her mandate, there will be a form of military coup. It's not an accident. I was and it's, and and it's already day. happened. I want you to speak this when we come back. Because this, this happened. You talked about it four years ago. Colonel Schaefer Correct. talked about it. Uh, Tosh Plumley talked about it. Uh, then Cy Hirsch came on uh, just last year and said, I just want to come on and say you guys basically broke this. He told me off air, he said, great job, but you heard him on air. And he just said, yes, this is all accurate, released his own information. Backing up, there was like a soft coup against Obama and the globalist. And so I want to ask, it seems like they've kind of mopped that up now and are kind of back in control and are moving ahead. Uh, or, or, or there's a partial takeover of the military that's happened when they kick Flynn and a bunch of others out. So if I'm wrong, correct me. But where does this go after all this? Stay right there, Dr. Pachenik, stevepachenik.com. Because I, I, listen, I'm sitting here watching Hillary engage in all forms of treason, butchering the country. She's out to get American workers. She wants to make us poor to control us. We have audio of her admitting it. And it's, it's just like, are our are, are so-called elites really this crazy to kill prosperity just because the elites, some of these Hollywood elites want to piss on America? Is this all just some giant ritual so you guys can flush this country down the toilet like some child sacrifice? I mean, I don't see this happening. Now that we've got callers that have been holding since the last hour, but Dr. Pachenik can speak whatever topics you bring up here in about 10 minutes when we go to you. Johnny uh, in Florida and, of course, uh, Glenn in Las Vegas, Canadian soldier in Canada. Travis in Michigan and others. Robins in the Virgin Islands will get to you as well. Uh, this hour is brought to you by the nutraceuticals, the vitamins, the minerals, the supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. It's been seven years in the making. We've only been having these nutraceuticals for five years, but it's seven years in the making from the firm we got it from. The very best 50 billion active and live cultures. Uh, we're talking 23 top probiotic strains. It is Biome Defense from InfoWarsLife.com. It's a great product and it funds our operation. We also have 23% off DNA Force, our flagship product, with the Bio PQQ, the CoQ10, the 100 plus studies, you name it. Uh, that's available at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888 253 3139. The Hillary for Prison shirts are a collector's item. I'm going to stop making them after the election. That's only 20. Uh, but uh, 34 uh, days away, and so that's that. If you want to support us and get one of these shirts, it has InfoWars.com on the right-hand shoulder, as well as Legalized Freedom, InfoWars.com on the back. It's a great way to spread the word and support the broadcast. InfoWarsStore.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Whether it's solar panels and their control units, or whether it's high-quality water filtration or air purifiers, or whether it's non-GMO heirloom, open-pollinated seeds, shortwave uh, crank or solar radios, emergency radios, and books, films, you name it, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or 888-253-3139. StevePachinik.com has got links to his novels, his articles, uh, his stories as well. A lot of excellent information. We got 33% off on the solar panel control units and solar panels for a limited time as well at InfoWarsStore.com. Okay. Getting back to Dr. Steve Pachinik, we were looking at where we are in this country. And you see the military leaking information, mainly the Army. Uh, you see, well, the Army's perfect, <laughs> Lord, Lord no. But that's 1775, the, 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 the first thing in the country was the Army. It was already being set up before the Declaration of Independence uh, got ready. It was already warmed up and ready. George Washington in command. And you see where that frontier Army was you know, built into to beat the Redcoats, and the rest is history. And here we are with the U.S. being handed over to globalists, the TPP, multinationals, one-sided trade deals, globalists working against us, nationalism rising across the world, countries breaking away, regions breaking away, that de-evolution, which is a good thing, from centralized, tyrannical control. And you've made a lot of predictions that have come true, Dr. Pachenik, looking at Trump, looking at the military. Am I wrong in saying four years ago, cut and dry, our government's backing al-Qaeda in Syria, on the hills of Benghazi, there is a quiet awakening, not even a mutiny, because we've been hijacked. The military says, no, we're not going to be Al-Qaeda's Air Force. We see senators, to their credit, come out like Paul and, and Cruz and, and, and repeat talking points from this show. Soros and people flip out, but you know they still can't stop us. Then quietly our military starts rolling back Al-Qaeda. They change the name to ISIS. Saudi Arabia puts huge support behind it. But four years later, with the Russians and others and U.S. intelligence, which is admitted, countermanding Obama's criminal orders and Hillary's criminal orders from when she was at state, that's rolled back. Now they're finally about to defeat ISIS in many areas. 
ISIS declares an emergency a month ago, says shelter in place, start attacking wherever you're at. We see the attacks. Hillary tries to deny those are attacks because it's her own people double-crossing her. Doesn't fit her narrative. Uh, that blows up in her face. But it does seem like now they've kind of countermanded it, and our military is doing some strikes, or at least NATO is, against the Syrian forces. Is that accurate? Or when you talk to your folks, what's really happening, Dr. Pachinik? Well, what's really happening is in the Philippines, the president of the Philippines not only insulted our president, called him the bastard of a whore, which is unconscionable, no matter who Obama is or that's the presidency of the United States. He just asked and requested that our special forces leave Mindanao and the Philippines, and he doesn't want our military in the Philippines bases of Subit Bay. That happened once when I was Deputy Assistant Secretary of East Asia, and I said to the Philippines, the Filipinos, you do this, and I will pull away every visa and every American passport that we have granted to the Philippines, including to the President of the Philippines. And I'm giving a warning to the President of the Philippines, do not, do not threaten our soldiers. Do not uh, extradite or take out our and he's issued forces. new insults and new threats what does this signify well what it signifies is that obama has failed completely he's failed um, domestically obamacare is now considered a disaster it went out of it was too expensive they never really planned it out uh, nancy pelosi was as usual incompetent the democrats were totally incompetent they don't understand numbers Ethna's pulling out, the insurance companies are pulling out, and so instead the Democrats are crying for government-provided uh, health care, which is the absurdity of absurdity. Sure, it's cloud and pivot, blow up the old system on purpose. They Correct. think we're dumb enough to well, go to their next level. Blow the system, they, they're just incompetent. What's happening is we don't have a person like Trump who can read a balance sheet and a cash flow statement. Hillary and Bill have never looked at a balance sheet or a PL statement. They know nothing about building a business, nothing about creating assets. They only know how to work, pay for play. We cannot have that anymore. Our military is on standby. They understand what it is I'm saying. The oath takers are standing by uh, the, our military and intelligence community. However, this administration has really gone out of its way to feminize our military, in particular your young man who correctly said we're going to spend several million dollars to provide surgery for transgender. Is this a joke? I've got guys who have a PTSD. I have people who have never seen psychiatrists. I have more PTSD and a higher frequency of suicide than we've ever had before because we don't have enough psychiatrists. 2023 a day. Well, it's not only 23 a day, but think of it for a moment. They send these boys, these young men and women, into harm's way for a war that we really did not need. And when they come back, they discard them. And the new VA, who he, uh, the new Veterans Administration administrator, he's totally incompetent. Well, here's an example. Joe Biggs was blown up in armored vehicles twice, hit by shrapnel twice on record. And they just will not give him health care. He's been there like 100 times, the big facility in Austin. They just say, we don't have your paperwork. Come back next week. It's all a big joke, and they put him on these death lists, I think politically, because he says people that are little minions of the globalists, they get their health care. Well, the point here is that we don't have a Veterans Administration, despite the fact they brought in some businessman who had gone to West Point, despite the fact that they're totally rife with corruption. Again, what we're talking about is getting rid of a system that is so corrupt, a plutocracy that's run by money. You're talking about James Comey of the FBI, incompetent. Loretta Lynch of the Department of Justice, incompetent and compromised. You're talking about John Brennan of the CIA, a second quality CIA analyst who became the head of the CIA because he could, he was a sycophant. But you have the guys like Michael Flynn who are not sycophants. They work for Trump because they defied the intelligence system as I did. We're not beholden to them. 
And Mike Flynn said it exactly correctly. He said all of our generals, the three, four stars and others who retired, received their incredible pensions. And at the same time, they're on the board of directors because they don't want the, anything to change. Well, that has to change. When jo George Marshall came in, he fired 600 of our people right away, our generals, our admirals, in order to bring in men like Eisenhower, who was the brilliant commander, but at the age of 59. He was still a colonel. I've got men here at 59 with three stars, never been in combat. And then we had Patton, who Trump liked and I liked. But you have to remember, Patton was an out-of-the-box thinker. Trump needs that. He needs that. Well, by the way, speaking of Flynn, I never played his full speech three weeks ago when Trump uh, chumped the media uh, on the whole uh, Hillary thing and the Birther thing and the Obama thing and actually had a bunch of uh, Congressional Medal of Honor winners and generals and admirals there. When Flynn got up, I never aired the full speech. He said, this is 1776. This is Lexington and Concord. Our country's under attack. He said, basically, this is a war and was absolutely on fire up there. But the reality is, that's what's happening. Let me ask you this question. What happens, though, if she steals the election? Because, I mean, what are your big concerns with them, quote, bringing in... My concern is that she will, not, she will steal the election because they control some of those machinery. And that's what's really uh, nefarious. They have a hold on all kinds of uh, utility and, and machinery and other elements that control the so-called delegates and superdelegates. My real concern is she comes in, she's not qualified mentally and physically. She has Parkinson's disease. Her doctor is incompetent. Like a Columbia physicians and surgeons should have come out and said it. The Secret Service should have said it. The FBI should have said it. The CIA. Well, in fairness, no the Secret Service did reach out to us a month before she fell well, down. Well, that's, that's nice, but that's not enough. Their job is to us. It is not to Hillary Clinton or to Trump. They're, they're being paid by me and by you. That's right. They work for us. What will happen is we will have on standby, which is what I wrote in Maximum Vigilance, we will have on standby a group of military officers and intelligence officers who will be ready, if needed, to take over the government. And the reason I say this is when she is incapacitated, I went through this several times. Henry Kissinger, the, the, one of the finest things he ever did, and I've criticized him, was he took over the government when Nixon was disabled. And he and Schlesinger and others had a soft coup. At the same time with uh, uh, Reagan, Nancy Reagan, who was brilliant, asked James Baker to come in in the National Security Council and the White House, and he literally took over the White House. Sure, was that when Alexander Haig was running around saying, I'm in control now? No, that Haig was totally out of it. He, yeah. anyone no, no, but that was at the same time. Control. Yeah, I'm sorry? That was at the same time he famously went on TV and correct. said... Correct. Yeah. That's correct, Alex. But Haig was not seen as a, as a very competent individual, and he wasn't. He was a sycophant of Douglas MacArthur. The one who was in charge and was not a sycophant was James Baker, the Secretary of State. And he then, in turn, allowed us to have a smooth transition. So this issue of a de de debilitated presidency is a very dangerous issue for us now. That's why on, on no other consideration you have to bring in Trump and his people. But Trump has to identify who his Secretary of State will be, who his Secretary of Defense will be beforehand so that we have a good idea that he is ready to implement a full... What would you do right now if you were Trump? Because he's got too many advisors. He's all over the map. I would fire, if I, right now, I would fire Christie, Giuliani, and put Michael Pence as my surrogate. I would then hire... Somebody like me or others who understand exactly how to work a debate and the psychology of debate and focus not on himself, but focus on how the mathematics of his oh, life. Yeah, I would totally ignore everything she says to me and just bring up the topics I want to bring up. That's correct. He has to be in control. He's not in control. And he has to bring in the fact that he is a businessman and really a mathematician. He went to the University of Pennsylvania at Wharton School. He understands. What and as soon is. as the moderator, uh, I mean, give me a break. We know what 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 Anderson Cooper is going to do. As soon as he interrupts him five or six times, I'd say, hey, you're not interrupting her. Am I debating both of you? He needs to slap him down because if he can't attack the woman, he can certainly attack Anderson Cooper. Well, he doesn't have to attack either one. Anderson Cooper has been, he was, he was an intern two years in a row with the CIA. I mean, Anderson Cooper is a sweet-looking little boy, but he's not a serious, uh, intelligent individual who can really penetrate the issues. He knows this. He listens to it. 
The real issue has to do with uh, Trump's control of the debate. Anderson Cooper is irrelevant. So is Hillary. There has to be somebody on the team who explains to him there's an opening strategy, a middle strategy, and an end strategy. It's not an ex Well, Trump did meet with Baker privately, and then it leaked two days later. I actually even knew about it. But, I mean, what do you make of that meeting? Does it, does well, I don't know what James Baker said, but in working with James Baker, I know Baker needs others to be able to implement that kind of strategy. Baker's a very serious man, a very good uh, manager, but he brings in those people who he thinks are the best and the brightest. I don't think Trump has the best and the brightest. Right now, he has to change his team. He has to be able to understand systematically that I is not a word that belongs there. He has to understand that the numbers that he created can be utilized for our country, and he has to do that through a didactic Sure. Way. Why doesn't the, 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 the different cobbled together groups of the elite want someone to bring optimism back and turn the engine of the economy on? Why do the globalists admit they want to keep the economy stagnant so they can con consolidate control? Well, that's not only consolidate control. It's really uh, the, the globalists or these bankers, are, are they're falling apart. Let, let me give you an example. Deutsche Bank is one of the most crooked banks in the United States and in Germany. For years, Deutsche Bank has committed irregular activities. Finally, the United States government went after Deutsche Bank, slapped them with a $5.4 billion fine. Deutsche Bank could not handle it. They ran to Angela Merkel, who's really quite a good leader, despite the fact she brought in immigrants. Sure. I mean, isn't this part of this covert trade war going on? Not really a covert trade war. What's happening is what I said to you about devolution. The devolution entails all kinds of financial chicanery where the banks can no longer create any increase in revenue. So they bring themselves out of the equation because they become so stagnant, we're forced to create a new economy. That, well, yeah. I mean, honestly, the, the black economy or the economy that's uh, uh, the hidden economy that works off the books is far, is far more important to us in the United States than the credit card economy. Because and that's the why the big box stores are inherently at war with the original barter economy, because they see it as a threat. Well, the box stores, yeah, that's correct in a way, Alex, but the box stores are going under. If one thing you can be certain of is you will see... Every major mall is going on. No, no, I already see things reverting back to smaller stores local. Correct. And, and in the areas I live in, the rural south, we have bartering all the time. The IRS cannot handle it. They don't want to. It's basically a black economy, which really does make America work. The truckers, the, the entrepreneurs. And notice, even though they say the south is the poorest area in the country, it has a much lower crime rate than places you know, that supposedly have more money. And that's because there's a huge black economy. Well, it's not only because of a huge black economy, it's also because we have uh, Sig Sauer's and we have, uh, you know, sawed off shotguns and, and we believe in the Second Amendment. I mean, it's, it's very clear why the South Guns. is far stronger. You don't walk here and if you happen to be a stranger and you want to hold somebody up, you better be very certain that you're not facing a barrel. And it's as simple as that. I mean, Hillary has all those people around her. Obama has all those people protecting him. He has over 700 secret services, which we pay for. And then he can spout about gun control. I mean, it's a farce. He knows that. Thousands of blacks have been killed by blacks in Chicago. He doesn't say a word. He hasn't given any money for mental health. Well, they've clearly gone to this whole weaponized race thing, and I think it's blown up in their face. What do you think? Well, it's totally blown up in the face because the national uh, North Carolina, that one episode was absurd. It didn't reflect anything that I saw in terms of the African-American middle class and upper middle class community. I was traveling 4,000 miles on the East Coast, up and down the states. You don't see that problem. You don't see African-Americans who are discontent. They're riding, they're driving. Sure, it's, they're, 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 they're creating a perception to hide what they've done to them. We're going to come back, take a few final call, phone calls. We've got a special guest paul watson's hosting the fourth hour by the way paul watson was jogging and pulled a muscle he's not doing the fourth hour he's doing it tomorrow i'm gonna do part of it and david knight's coming in i just learned that uh during the break we're gonna have continued coverage tonight kicking off at seven o'clock central live with the three to four hours i think they want to go like four hours i was like they'll be live for three hours is it oh, longer so we'll see tonight seven o'clock central coverage and and live streams with our own feed of the debate the, the vp debate uh tonight we're going to go to break in a moment. I promise I'm going to Glenn in Las Vegas and Robin in the Virgin Islands and uh, Johnny in Florida and everybody straight ahead here in about five minutes. But closing out with Dr. Steve Pachinik, 
I know we have great people, you know, in this country, in the private entrepreneurial areas, great people in the military who have set up a lot of, you know, I'm mean, against a lot of bad stuff, but I've seen the Clintons get away with our missile secrets to China and all these major sellouts and selling us out to all these foreign interests. Why, why do they have such incredible cover? I mean, I know they represent a bunch of, you know, corrupt elites, but it seems like they're too big to fail. And if they've already gotten away with so much, why couldn't they get away with stealing an election? I mean, I, I, I'm really concerned. They can get away with stealing an election, but eventually what happens is their tendency on both sides, including Bill and Hillary, is self-destructive. And even their own daughter, Chelsea, brought that out in the notes that she took while she was in Haiti. And she noticed how destructive their own team and the people were, including her own family when they uh, tried to implement anything effective in Haiti. The truth of the matter is we have a very corrupt system that it's based on two elements. To be a politician, which is really not a, a, a profession anymore, you have to be a panderer and you have to be vulnerable. When that, those two elements come together, that means you want the kindness of strangers and at the same time the kindness of strangers manipulates that individual. It's all about manipulation. And in effect, they don't create anything. There are no assets. What's really beautiful right now, as much as I explained years ago that Catalan would break away from Spain and that Spain was a non-functioning country, there, there is no government in Spain now. And every Spaniard is happy. They are happy because they don't have a president, they don't have a prime minister, and what's working is exactly what you and I talked about. And Spain is the example. Every region in Spain now is functioning at capacity because you don't need a president. The presidency of the United States is so irrelevant as a position. I can't even tell you how much money it costs us to move a president from one point to another. Obama is a disaster. What he underlined very clearly was whether you're black or white, but you're still incompetent and you're sponsored by the CIA. You're a disaster by definition because you've done nothing, you've gone nowhere, and you're not going to accomplish anything. So from now on, we have to understand if we're going to implement anything in the White House, we need somebody who created something. Despite now, Trump does Trump it. I mean, he wants to get the, the globalists and insiders off our backs. What Trump is going to do if he gets there, he's going to clean out house immediately. But I have to know, and the, the, the audience has to know, who is on his team. Besides Mike Flynn, I want to know who is the Secretary of State, who's the Secretary of Defense, who's going to be the domestic. Yeah, his CIA state. pick is, is, is not Correct. good. It's not only the CIA pick, but who are the people? If they, he's talking to Giuliani and Chris, he's talking to two people who are involved in 9-11, both of whom are highly compromised. Are you talking, I mean, Chris Giuliani was, was within 12 hours of 9-11, he had 154 dump trucks ready to go and take away the evidence. So Giuliani is highly compromised. He's not a very effective leader, and the New Yorkers don't like him. No, that's right. The building was blown into nice little pieces. He had the dump trucks with GPS on every piece of metal. Correct. And then Christie has a, a New Jersey, which is failing financially and politically. I just went through the state. He's compromised. So Trump has to be very careful who, and who he's picking and has to associate. Sure. With. I'll just say this. I mean, the reason I trust Trump is he's got the elite so scared of him and so upset. But I, I, I absolutely we've got to keep his feet to the fire and keep him honest. Uh, Steve Pachenik. Dot com. You, Folks can also follow <laughs> you, you on Twitter. We'll put that up on screen. I look forward to speaking to you again. Very, very serious uh, uh, situation unfolding. The debate covered tonight. Fourth hour coming up. Stay with us. Your phone calls. 70 seconds away. I'm Alex Jones.